On this 10th day of January, we look at Genesis 25 and 26. And chapter 25 begins with, Abraham took another wife whose name was Keturah. And you know what made me wonder? Did he take this other wife after Sarah had, had passed away? I mean, Sarah was 127 when she died. Abraham was 10, 11 years older. Uh, 138, did he take another wife at that point and have six sons? Or had he had two wives, which wasn't uncommon, unheard of um, in that day. It just, I mean, they, but uh, regardless, I mean, he has six more sons that are listed here. Uh, and um, then it goes on and it talks about some of those grandsons of Abraham that are born that way. And uh, verse 7, Abraham's life ended at 175 years. Abraham breathed his last and died a good old age. And verse 9, his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave uh, along with his wife Sarah. And so Isaac and Ishmael, who were, you know, brothers, half-brothers, we'll call it, say, um, were together and buried their father Abraham in with with Sarah, and um, and then and then in verse twelve we start with the descendants of Ishmael, Ab Abraham's son, um, with Hagar, the, you know that had been Sarah's maid, you know, and and all that story we've already talked about, and and Ishmael has twelve sons just like someone else does, you know, um, yeah, Isaac will. And um, these are the names of the sons of Ishmael listed in order of, of their birth. So he lists all of the names of, of the sons of Ishmael. And, and um, so the Ishmael is uh, the son of Hagar. And then these other six sons that have these other children, um, it's, you know, the, the Arab nations basically came through them and the, the Jewish nation through Isaac. And, and it's a part of the animosity that's been between those, those countries, those regions, you know, for all of these years is, is because of that. But we have the descendants uh, that way. And Verse 17, this is the length of the life of Ishmael, 137 years. And he died and was gathered to his people. And, and then in verse 19, we begin with the descendants of, of Isaac, Abraham's son. And it says he was 40 years old when he measured, met, married Rebekah. Um, and we just talked about that story, how Rebekah came. And... Um, and it, you know, verse 21, Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his prayer and his wife, Rebekah, conceived. The children struggled together, you know, within her womb. And she wondered why she should live. And then the birth of, of Jacob and Esau uh, comes. And Esau is the firstborn. But Jacob, it says, comes out grabbing onto the heel of Esau, and um, they were, you know, born nearly simultaneously, but there was such a difference. It says, you know, Esau was, um, as they grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in the tents. And um, Esau was m much more hairy than than. Uh, than Jacob was as well. So, I mean, there wasn't, there wasn't any trouble telling which one was which. And, you know, Jacob was uh, the man of the ground and, and stuff. And so one day when Jacob was cooking, and verse 29 says, he was cooking a stew and Esau came in and was famished. And Esau asked for something to eat, for I am famished. And Jacob says, first, sell me your birthright. I mean, really? I mean, that's a quite a price for a bowl of stew. Sell me your birthright. And, um, and Esau says, I'm about to die. What, what good is a birthright to me? I mean, it, 
this is a, a, a sound of a desperate person. I mean, uh, to be so hungry that you're afraid you're going to die. I mean, it just so much of this doesn't really make sense, but um, it's what it's what's written out for us, and and it it's just you know it's another one of those you know maybe you know he didn't realize what he was doing, and so often you know we do that same thing. We'll do something quickly, impulsively, and not realize the. The, the ramifications, the, the consequences that will come later. And so Esau um, confirms, promises to Jacob that, you know, my birthright will be yours. And the birthright was a big deal. You know, the firstborn son um, would get, you know, two-thirds and the secondborn one-third, or the firstborn would get two-thirds and, and the rest would be divided out between the others. But Esau swears to Jacob um, that he will give him the birthright. Jacob serves him, it says, bread and lentil stew. And he ate and drank and went on his way. And, it, you know, the last verse says, thus Esau despised his birthright. He didn't see any value in it. He didn't, you know, he just didn't understand what it was to be or what it was going to be. And then chapter 26, we have a famine in the land. And we have Isaac. Isaac goes to Gerar, to King Abimelech of the Philistines. And, and I did some looking and I can't, I mean, this King Abimelech, you know, King Abimelech, when Abraham and Sarah went there to Gerar, you know, Abraham said that Sarah is my wife and King Abimelech, you know, was king then. And here, I mean, uh, Isaac was 60 years old when, when, uh, when the twins were born, and so this is a lot of years later than when Isaac, or when Abraham and Sarah went there, but Isaac and uh, Rebekah and family go there, and and here's this King Abimelech again. Unless maybe there were, you know, like King Henry the first, second, third, up to the eighth. Maybe there were more than one King Abimelech. I, I couldn't couldn't find anything definite about that, but it just was surprising to me when I read and realized again that, you know, this king, if it's the same one, he's been there in power for many years. But, you know, Abraham lived 175 years. Esau lived 137 years. And so, I mean, if this king Abimelech had been a young man when Abraham was there, although, you know, Abraham was 100, you know, it just, I mean, some of the things don't, don't make sense to me, but um, I guess we don't need to understand everything just like we don't totally understand the book of revelation either do we so the lord says to Isaac, uh, to isaac don't go down to egypt but stay here in the land of gerar in the land of the philistines and i will be with you and i will make your offspring as numerous as the stars so the promise that had been to abraham of the descendants so many that you you know more than the stars more than the grains of sand comes now to isaac so Isaac, it says, settles in Gerar. And when they ask about his wife, what's he say? Just like Abraham, she's my sister. Uh, well, he, he gets caught on that. And so here again now, verse 9, Abimelech calls for Isaac and says, so she's your wife. You know, he, he's seen them together, Abimelech has. And, and he says, why are you trying to deceive me? And, you know, the, the, the deception that goes on, you know. And, but, he, you know, he gets gets by this, you know, anyway. And so Isaac plants the seed in the ground and he he becomes very rich. Uh, crops are good, his lamb, his, his flocks grow. Um, he becomes very wealthy and prosperous, it says. And the Philistines envied him. And then we get this verse thrown in there. It says the Philistines had stopped up. They had filled in the wells that Abraham had dug and everything. And... So, I, 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 what, what's that all about? Uh, just that the wells had been filled in for whatever reason. And so then Abimelech comes to see that Isaac is, you know, very successful, you know, and becoming a rich, wealthy man. And he says, you, you need to go live in a different spot. You need to go away from us. So verse 17, he departs from there, Gerar, G-E-R-A-R, -E and he goes to the valley of Gerar. I mean, 
So how far did he go? I mean, I, I, it just, it doesn't sound like a, a long move, a, a long distance move, but, but he moves to a different land, the Valley of Gerar, and he settles there and, and digs wells of water that had been dug in the days of his father Abraham. So he finds these wells and opens them up again. And, um, they found a well with a spring of water and the herders, it says of Gerar, quarreled with Isaac's herders saying the water is ours so we want we want the well you know and and so they they dug another well and they quarreled over that one and he moved from there and he dug another well and they did not quarrel over that one and so that these settlers of Gerar even though they're now in the valley of Gerar and Isaac and his men are digging new wells there is animosity there, and you no, know, this is ours. You you got to move. So I mean, it's had they been there before. So it's a right of you know first having been there. You know, I I just I couldn't tell you, but um, Isaac has moved several times, and they finally get this well dug, and and there's no quarrel over it. So he settles there. Uh, but then you know the next verse, he goes up to Beersheba, and the Lord appears to him. And he says, so um, the Lord says, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not be afraid. I am with you and I will bless you and make your offspring numerous for my servant Abraham's sake. So Isaac builds an altar and worships God. And um, again, uh, Abimelech, King Abimelech comes and says, if we see you're getting to be many, we need to make a treaty so that we know that we don't need to worry about you coming and attacking us. Uh, protecting themselves that way from, you know, Jacob has, or Isaac has never seemed to be a, a man of of war of that way, but they come to draw a truce. And so the, the friction that's been there, now they have a truce, and um, Isaac is, is settled in his new land, and the very ending of this chapter, what we read today, it says, when Esau was 40, he married Judith, and and they made life bitter for Isaac and Rebecca. Um, the family matters. I mean, it's just. I mean, we find it all over in the Bible. We find it all over today. Um, but it would be so nice if we could figure out a way to get along, and we all know that well.